Hey guys, I realize I haven't been doing many videos lately, but I've been working on some really cool engineering projects. So, um, majority of my stuff I'm releasing on DefCAD, um, and there's a few reasons for that. I know you guys are giving me a little pushback on doing that, but I actually am going to be doing an interview with Cody Wilson coming up pretty soon here, and we're going to explore uh, some of the reasons um, why I'm doing it and uh, maybe dispel some of the myths you guys have uh, as far as uh, your willingness to go on there and download these files. But without further ado, let me show you what I got cooking. So some of these things are available for download right now, and uh, some of these are in the pipeline as far as um, the approval process. The design work's finished. We're just waiting to get them ready for upload. So this here I know is available right now. And these are buffers, rifle buffer, carbine buffer. Now you're saying, huh, dude, plastic buffers, really? Okay, hold on. So these things work fine for normal semi-automatic fire. You only really need those buffer weights when you're uh, firing cyclic rate, meaning you need to drop the hammer as soon as the bulk carrier group goes in battery. So this applies to fully automatic and uh, in regards to um, the force reset triggers. The force reset triggers for a couple reasons, but um, for a regular semi-automatic fire and um, also uh, for binary fire as well, these are gonna work just fine for you. Now, these are also really cool for doing a lightweight build. So uh, you wanna do something where your rifle weighs like nothing, this is the way to go. Um, also for competition use, where you really cut down the reciprocating mass, again, this is the way to go. These are, these are gonna be fabulous for you. Um, it's gonna be best if you have an adjustable gas block so you can dial down that pressure because it doesn't need to work as hard. Um, but uh, it'll work just fine with a uh, standard mil spec gas pressure setting. Uh, so I went ahead and marked these semi automatic use only because they ain't gonna work for you in that, any other condition. So got these available for you right now. Um, and I didn't stop the goodness there. We got a in play slash castle nut available for the. 3D printed lowers I'm already doing for AR-15s. And this will give you a three position stock. If you regularly have a six position, this will cut half the positions out, but that's the design of the lower. So, but this will give you the ability to adjust it to A2 length of pool, A1 length of pool, and something a little bit shorter than that. Okay, my radio fans. This is a replacement battery cassette bottom for the Klansman PRC 349 radios. So it has plastic threads in here. Uh, I know the original military ones had a steel insert, but these plastic threads will work just fine for your application. And uh, this will get your radio back up and going without the worry of moisture infiltration into that case. So you can minimize your corrosion issues by replacing those cracked and otherwise damaged cases with these replacement parts. Okay, now I'm getting into the spicy stuff here. We got ourselves a dovetail adapter for the PVS-14. And this one here, I started off for left eye use only. Now, um, I'll have a right eye to come, and uh, I'll also have um, maybe set it up for both. But for right now, we're starting off with the left eye thing. This is here on a INV Genie mount. Locks in really nice. I actually field tested this a little bit at the uh, One Shepherd Leadership Institute spring semester down in uh, Alpha Company, Missouri, uh, for their sticks lanes. And this worked great for me, guys. And getting into printable Glock frames. Yeah, man. This is, uh, I had a uh, Glock 43 sitting in a drawer. Wasn't really using it. I'm like, man, 
you know, turn that into 43X. Just need a new frame. And I can rock them cool Shield Arms eggs. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> right when I go to do this, Shield Arms announces they're bringing in uh, high cap mags or higher capacity magazines, I should say, for the uh, regular 43. But man, 15 sounds a lot better than whatever that uh, standard 43 is going to go to. And I got a lot better, bigger grip here so I can get a full hand on it. I'm also doing pretty cool stuff with it as far as the grip texture. I know this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but uh, it's a little inspiration from a talk uh, Todd from uh, Todd's workshop did. And I couldn't help myself. I had, to, <laughs> I had to roll it out on this initial design. But there's a lot of cool stuff here. Um, I originally started with a model that a uh, fella goes by the name of the Other Sig did. And I just uh, did a bunch of improvements and modifications on it. And uh, if you go look at the downloadable file, when that's available, it'll list, detail out all those changes I made. Um, but uh, man, this is, <laughs> this is cool stuff. I'm, uh, I'm a believer in this. And again, I'm also becoming a super fanboy of the Talman 3D PC, PC TPE because man, this stuff's really tough. Um, and, uh, and it's pretty rigid too. I mean, once you get all the inserts in here and everything, um, it, it, it just rocks and rolls. So, um, and, and then, and then again, it has all that durability it's bringing to the table. So, so <laughs> it's awesome. It's an awesome material. And uh, I think it works great for, uh, for handguns without any real uh, additional changes to the, to the design to enhance structural integrity. It just, it just rocking and rolling. So, um, so again, super, becoming a super fanboy of this PC TPE. Now, I've been making some incremental changes to this, uh, AR-15 lower design. I actually went ahead and tested it out there at the uh, One Shepherd Leadership Institute's, uh, uh, well, I had a I had a buddy test it during his WBC, uh, WBC hot lanes where he got to do a little force on force. They were really short, but you know, aggressive, really pushing, pushing through the woods, uh, engaging a live opponent. And uh, I got to run this also in the sticks lanes uh, myself personally. And, uh, man, I think, uh, I think this thing's fully debugged now. I mean, um, magazines drop free, uh, charging handle pulls back, no problem. There's no binding in the, uh, buffer section. I mean, this thing was just rocking and rolling. Um, so I did make, uh, some additional changes. So for the, um, quad stack magazines, like the 60 rounders, uh, I was having some problems this, um, Magwall was a little long and I was having to really ram it in there to uh, to seat it. So I just shrunk this down a little bit so that seat's flush. And I had to make some little minute changes to the Magwall here as well to be able to seat the uh, Magpul D60 drums. That's all taken care of. So this thing um, is just gonna run whatever uh, whatever you put in it. So exciting stuff here as well. But, um, Anyways, guys, I really appreciate your support and um, stay tuned because there's more cool stuff coming down the pipe. Small Team Supply, 